Yesterday, Jennifer broke the news that our clothes dryer gave up the fight. We've got an old-fashioned electric unit here in my laundry room. This is the legacy style. When it's finished, it sounds like I just picked the wrong answer. As I understand it, it still spins, but it doesn't get hot. Is that right? Yes. Now, are you sure you know how to work this machine? Yes. Okay. Why do we have two of them? I'm just kidding. This is the washing machine. Ooh. Jennifer, you need to make sure you keep this wound a little bit tighter. It'll work better that way. So the first thing I want to do here is pull this thing out so we can get to the guts of it. The way these things work is really pretty simple. There's a heating element back here, which I believe is just a coiled up wire, similar to an electric space heater. My best guess at the problem is either the heating element or a component in close proximity to it. So after I pull this out, I'll take this rear cover off and see what's going on. I'm going to try this thing just because I am the way I am. Yeah, she's running cold. She's running cold. Ooh. It's unplugged. Did you unplug it? <laughs> Sometimes if the exhaust duct gets clogged, the dryer gets too hot and an emergency shutoff system goes into effect and makes the dryer not get hot. That could also be a possibility here. Hmm. Oh my. Oh my! Yeah, that's your problem right there. So we will have to clear that out, but I'll take this apart, see what's going on. What's on your foot? Uh, just a wrap. To pull off this back cover, it's just a number of one quarter inch sheet metal screws that need to be removed. I've heard that a substantial number of house fires are caused by misbehaving clothes dryers. So beware of that. Is that the last one? With this cover off, we can see what's going on here. I'm not an appliance expert. The only things I can tell from just looking at this is, here's the heating element. Air is drawn up through here. It gets hot. It goes through the drum. It dries the clothes. And then it comes out here through the exhaust. But here is a trick if you're a homebrew appliance repairman like me, usually if you take off the back cover to the control panel, you can find a wiring diagram that will tell you what all these different things do and how to run your different tests. I've been looking at my treasure map for a few minutes now and I'm pretty sure I got my head wrapped around how this thing works. The major malfunction is no power is getting to the heating element behind this enclosure. Power gets to it through these two terminals. If we look under here into the belly of the beast, there's a little bit better view. I'm not worried about electricity getting to this connection because it's fed directly by the wire, but for power to get to this point, it has to travel all the way down through this wire, past a thermal fuse, down here, through this thermostat, and finally, over here through this other thermostat and only then can the other side of the heating element be energized at which point hotness can happen. So this is how I believe events unfolded. The dryer duct got clogged because of lack of maintenance on the part of the resident. This caused hot air to be trapped and one of the thermal cutoff devices did its job and kept the house from burning down. I'll go through with my multimeter and check for continuity at each of these devices I just talked about. And I hypothesize that one of them will be open. If you hear a beep, everything's okay. That's good. That's good. It better beep. It better not beep. Aha! We have a suspect. So a quick and dirty and unadvisable way to test this 
is to get a friendly clip and connect these two terminals. Plug it in, see what happens. My hands aren't touching any wires, are they? Contact. And here we go for the field test. I smell burning. I smell burning. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> Look here. Can you see that? Can you see that? That's the wonderful glow of a working heating element. So I say, we found the problem. All I need to do now is tape this up, right? Put the cover back on. No. I will buy a replacement thermal cutoff. These are one-time use only. Once they blow, they're done. These two guys are thermostats, which regularly turn the power on and off to keep a certain temperature. So let's get this thing off. It's unplugged, the thing is in my hand, so I won't get shocked. I think a quarter inch nut driver could pretty much dismantle this whole thing. Oh, well, 5 sixteenths Phillips. So this. Come here, Jennifer, come here. I went to China Mart to see what this part costs if I want to replace it. It cost me all of $8.51 for a replacement, but I started looking around on YouTube. Bill Newberry has a channel. I have to give his name because he has shown me something amazing. Let's take this outside if you can believe it. So this thing is broken. There's no continuity between here, but the video that I saw on YouTube said that if I take this and whack it on the ground, it might fix it. So from what I understand, there is a metal disc in here, and from the factory, it's bowed in one direction, and when it gets to a certain temperature, in the event of a failure, it pops to the other direction and opens up this circuit. And if you whack it hard enough, supposedly you can get it back into the factory position. I don't recommend doing this. Spend the $9. We wanna make it hit flat on the ground. One more time then we'll test it with the ohmmeter. So we'll try it here. <laughs> How do you fix it? Throw it on the ground hard. I don't know if this is going to be safe or not, but I'll put it back together. The safety issue is that if somebody either fixes or replaces this without correcting the underlying problem. This fails for a reason. I believe my reason is a clogged duct, as you saw when the furry muskrat fell out earlier. So I'll put this back together, but before I put the dryer back in service, I'll make sure that duct is free and clear of any obstruction. So I can put all this back together now. I really like jobs where all the screws are the same size. Don't have to worry about where they go. I better test this one more time just to make sure it hasn't changed its mind. You can't argue with that. I'll go ahead and put the back cover on. Okay, I think that's ready, but before I put it in place, I wanna make sure that duct isn't going to cause me any more trouble. Wow. Ugh. Not a bad haul. Okay, and there's a chance of some cloggage in. Oh. You think you could knit a shirt out of that? I think that's pretty well cleared out. This just goes straight up to the roof. So after the dryer's installed, I'll turn it on and go feel around up at the chimney tops and make sure there's good airflow. Okay, that's done. It's time to bring this thing back into port. I ought to test it though. Do the folks at home want to see? I'm within cord's length anyway. Okay, open up the door. Can you stick your pretty head in there? Watch for the glowing embers. That's a beautiful sight. 
sight to see. It looks inviting. You want to climb in there with me? <laughs> Roll around with each other? Good enough for me. Seeing all the lint come out of that pipe was sobering. I'm embarrassed about it. I think we should have done that a lot earlier. Hopefully, someone watching will be proactive and do it themselves before they have to take their dryer apart. Just a few more heaves here should do it. You plan on staying back there? I guess I'll just live back here. I need to get this duct arranged so I can place the appliance as close to the wall as possible. One, two, three. Lift. There. Expenditure averted. The last thing I want to do is get up on the roof and check for airflow at the exhaust vent. Do you know if it's raining? It is. Feels good. Lots of airflow. Check your dryer ducts and check them often. Thanks for watching. <laughs>